Good evening, everybody. My name is Doug Sartori. I'm the chair of the board of HackForge, uh, and I'm also the, um, the lead for the Border City Data Interest Group. And I'm so glad that you're here tonight because we have a really special opportunity to hear from a Microsoft MVP. Deepak Kashik is our speaker. He is a Microsoft MVP has a tremendous breadth and depth of knowledge on um, various products and solutions offered by Microsoft, but most especially Microsoft Azure. He is a knowledgeable and sought after um, in IT circles as a speaker, and he is regularly consulted by companies who are formulating their cloud strategy. Um, we very much appreciate Deepak being here, and I'm going to turn things over to him uh, so that you can take it away from here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Doug. And thank you so much, everyone who joined today. And uh, we are going to talk about <laughs> Azure Lake House architecture. And this is kind of quite uh, nowadays trending and uh, in demand as well from technology perspective. So uh, we have seen uh, what is data or Delta layer architecture are they same or are they different? There are so many things around that and we could figure about that as well. Um, we will cover a couple of success stories, real-time success stories, which has been implemented, what we have done, what technology we have implemented. So customer becomes successful and that's what we are going to do today. Um, you might see a couple of uh, architectural diagram in my presentation all across, like sometime you will see, okay, Oracle is there or Delta Lake is there, um, Data Lake is there. So we will take real time scenarios, like in this case, there are, we are talking about streaming devices and what we are doing over here. So, and uh, what we are doing for notification, basically we will cover a lot on this uh, presentation. So the, that would be agenda. We are discussing about technology landscape, how to decide your data migration, what would be your consideration when you are migrating so that your migration will be successful and key takeaways. So thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, my name is Deepak Kosik and I'm a Microsoft Azure MVP. And today we are going to discuss about Azure Data Lake House architecture. Uh, you might have find my uh, gone through my articles or videos. I have more than 1.5 million views on article and I have been contributing in technical community from more than uh, like since 2008. And uh, that's what I'm doing. You might be come across my videos at DevOps Lab as well. Uh, this is one of my favorite where I'm talking about migrating Azure um, Data Warehouse. And uh, uh, now let's get start and get ready. Fasten your belt for a beautiful cloud journey with me. Okay. So let's talk about few data architectural design, but let me uh, step back over here and let, let me share, okay. Earlier we have same structure data, structure data. What we are going to do, we have ETL operation here at the ingestion part. Now, if we talk from Azure perspective, it is Azure Data Factory. Then we store into Data Lake, which is raw storage and uh, performing some transformation saving that data, dumping somewhere else, and uh, then transforming that. Basically, in this scenario, this is kind of legacy which we have been using from years and years. Like we have dumping zone, we have transformation zone, and then we are displaying and for analytics purposes. Uh, right now, the same thing we are doing here as well. In architectural design, we have streaming data maybe from airplane, maybe from wind turbines or so many devices or batch data, which is called scheduled data. We could ingest that data into different form. Uh, and this bronze table, which you have heard about, is kind of the raw landing zone, which was earlier here. So bronze is the raw zone, but that raw zone is for you, not for customer. And then we have silver zone, which is kind of refined and massage data. And gold is kind of gold and mine, uh, where you have all the data 
present for analytical and AI purposes. But uh, take a look over here. Delta Lake is sitting over the data lake. So basically all the stories is on the data lake, which can be Google Cloud or ADLS Gen2 or Amazon or IBM or whatever is there. So Delta Lake is basically, if I have to define Delta Lake, it's open source project that enable building a lake house architecture with compute engine. So basically it is kind of supported by Spark or Synapse or all those different stuff, which we are going to discuss today. So Delta Lake is the logical and our data lake is kind of the physical where we have all the compute and storage power. If I had to define a color, uh, excuse me for my color choices over here, uh, Delta Lake, uh, if I have to define again, is open source project that work like, almost like data warehouse, but data not exactly data warehouse, and directly onto data lake. That's how we have delta lake over here. And it adhering to the all the principle, I'm not going on that. So let's understand it. For example, on the left-hand side, we could see on-prem when it was 2005, eight or 18. What we have seen like there is on-prem landing zone. We have source database and master database. Sometimes we say bronze, silver, or gold, or sometimes we say um, dev, stairs, and production. That concept has been changed in Delta Lake. Uh, now we have bronze Delta Lake, silver Delta Lake, or gold Delta Lake. And uh, similarly in Snowflakes as well, staging table, raw data vault, or business vault. So basically, in bronze, we always get the raw copy from any streaming device. For example, Nick is here, Rohit is here. And if I'm getting the streaming data or batch data, that data first go into the bronze table. And then uh, once we perform that data, any transformation has been done on that data, that will be on silver. And gold will be the final version of data, maybe in, um, Bronze, I have one terabyte of data, but in gold, I have maybe 10 gigs of data because golden has a lot of transformation and massage, and then we are getting that data. So this is how historically we move from 2005 to till now in this age where we are not dealing with hardware devices. We don't have data warehouse sitting in the a room with a lot of faces, it is more like a service. So basically what we understand, what is Lake House? A repository of data stored in data format. File is stored in Gen 2 or S3. And what format it spot? It spot every format. You talk about CSV file, you talk about structured, unstructured, semi-structured, binary, all format have been spotted. Uh, what are the best format? As per my experience, which I'm dealing with some clients who are quite advanced in technology transformation, they are more into Parquet and Avro. And uh, there are a couple of scenarios where we are dealing with uh, CSV scenarios as well, which is kind of uh, give some uh, yeah, challenges down the time. So basically a lake house is supported by each and every um, data available. Earlier we were talking about relational, non-relational, but when we're talking about or referring to data lake or delta lake, these questions are not significant. Let's look at this very traditional lake house architecture. Whatever the source we have on left side, IoT Hub, SQL, flat file, Avro, SQL, you take the name, it does not matter. Like whatever we have in source, we have data, uh, we need to move the data into the bronze and it has raw and append data, which is called Delta Lake. And uh, we move the data from ADLS uh, uh, Azure Data Factory. Once we have data in bronze, we push the data, which is the cleaner version and single version into the silver with the help of our logic, which is kind of notebook over here. And furthermore, we push the data into the gold, which is curator, curated and fact and deem basically business can use that data for their analytical purpose, their artificial intelligence. This is kind of 
the data which need to be available for making the decision. So this is how lake house architecture work and all these are uh, part of data transformation. Now we understand all the three bronze, silver and gold and that make it a delta lake. Another source to destination example, we are dealing with, uh, I'm showcasing one of the real time example of New York taxi, where we will see, okay, how we are moving the data to the bronze and silver and uh, production, uh, which is kind of uh, gold as well, uh, which sits over the ADLS Gen 2. Uh, well, here you could see, um, uh, I could not share a whole uh, bunch of resources over here, but bronze data lake, it looked like we are saying data lake, but it looked like a database and geographic table. And uh, we will figure out is this is a really table or it is something else. So basically this is uh, Azure Storage Explorer. If you uh, haven't used it, it's really very, uh, very good tool. And uh, we could look over like we have three folders over here and uh, we have dimension and fact under that we have on the basis of the year, how the data, data is available. And on the basis of data we have, okay, in 2020, I want to see sales data and what are the months and what are the days and eventually we could look over, okay. On 22nd of July, 2022, we get this file. This file I got at 10, 15, AM 36, 10, 15, 36, 11, 25, 22, 15, 28, 26. So it is hierarchical namespace with timestamp and different format of the files. So this is the beauty of Delta Lake with spot hierarchical namespace. We don't need to consider or bother a lot about it. And this is where we look for different file format. Do we have any file format dependency? I would say no, we don't have any file format dependency in Delta Lake. So let us uh, let me showcase a quick demo over here. Uh, earlier, I, so, I, I was showcasing these three folder in New York Taxi Lab, and it is the bronze and silver and raw and Delta in every, every folder. Like it is uh, three folders are there. Bronze is the dumping zone. You could say your zone or developer development zone. Silver is the more transformation and gold is the uh, really uh, the top one. And if I have to go to here, uh, let me showcase you uh, New York. Uh, this is my Azure Sign Apps workspace. If I open it, it will open this and uh, we could look over different different options available over here, what we have and what we need to <coughs> add. And uh, there are different options available as well. But we could start it right now. It is closed, but I will showcase you further as well. Give me a very quick second. Okay. So <coughs> basically, these are the, some of the detail of my Active Directory and uh, uh, where it sit, uh, sits. So basically, uh, if you look over, these are my data available. Lake lake database. So bronze data lake. What what are the tab table available? We see the table is not into kind of tabular format, but table is available into folder. So basically, they are indeed in a file format. How we code it? So we look over the various notebook and in this notebook you could see there is various format where we are giving the name of the uh, data frame and saving is it as it is so basically all the magic is done by spark and spark is doing all that magic and making that things happen in front of you as i work in on-prem uh, on-prem data warehouse or SQL world as well very extensively. I must say this is quite easier to work in the cloud or cloud technology as compared to what challenges we face into on-prem world. Okay, that is the one first example. Let me hold here for a second. If you guys have any questions, please go ahead. Maybe raise your hand and uh, or type whatever you have. 
feel free and uh, I want to make it as interactive as we could. And I will come back maybe after four or five minutes and uh, taking another question, we will make it very uh, interactive. So let's understand the requirement and current technology landscape. Uh, basically, I'm sharing one real time scenario. Let's consider there is one guy, Derek, he's a technician. He went for a site inspection every month. Sites are a very remote site, say in uh, Saskatchewan or in uh, Winnipeg, like they are kind of wind turbine thing. He get to the meter reading, go for drive five hours over there, get the meter reading, and bring back into the lab and process that data from that lab. And if there is any anomaly, any problem identified, that technician have to go again. So what is what are the problem statement? Travel time, uh, winter, uh, the security, all that is uh, the uh, problem statement and not getting real time output. So we get that problem statement and uh, the solution which we have implemented uh, Okay, that is the streaming data that guy need to go to the various sites, streaming data. We implemented IoT Hub and all the data into Azure Data Lake. We use very good feature over here. That feature is auto loader. I will talk about that. And once we have that, why we use auto loader? That is the question coming into your mind or you will be thinking, hey Deepak, what the auto loader is? I will consider um, explain that question into next slide and we we perform the transformation and data is available to the user and real time notification. So basically earlier the notification which that guy is getting in a one month. So it, it take too much time over there as well. So thank you so much, Doug. So basically that is a real time scenario as well. Um, and uh, I implemented autoloader first time because whenever there is any file land into a zone, what we need some notification services, then we need to put a message queue, then we need to schedule it or trigger it, and then it needs to be ingested. I get rid of these seven steps by autoloader. Autoloader is the service provided by Databricks where it will look over the file schema and look over whenever file is available, it suck it up and process that file. So basically you don't need to schedule, you could schedule it as well, but I haven't, I think I did hourly schedule. And uh, whenever file came, it process and move into the Azure Data Lake or Delta Lake. That's why if you haven't tried auto loader, it is must go for me. I would say, please uh, try that. So, uh, and once we have data, whether it is the streaming data or batch load data, you could process that data here as well. So <clears throat> another problem statement that is also uh, related to one client. Basically they need to migrate their Oracle DB into cloud. And problem statement was their Oracle DB is very, very intense, like 10 terabyte of data every year. That was the problem statement and I have historical data as well. So what I did, I proposed three solutions adhering to Azure well architect framework. I said, hey guys, you have three options. You could go with Delta Lake architecture. You could go with Azure SQL hyperscale or Azure Synapse architecture. Uh, with Delta Lake architecture, you could be leveraged by autoloader. Databricks is supporting full NSI feature, uh, basically SQL-like syntax. There is full spot. Uh, Azure SQL hyperscale, they ask why not another Azure machine or Azure SQL? I said, well, that has 2.5 terabyte of cap. So basically you could not use. So with this, you could rest as your uh, up to 100 terabyte of data size, elastic pool is there. Costing wise, um, it almost both are same and Synapse was not a preferred service by customers. So I get rid of that. But the question is, hey Deepak, how these solution are adhere? How you propose those solution? What are, 
what are the rationale to propose that solution so the my rationale is always adhere to azure well architect framework which is a w a f azure well architect framework that say okay five pillars are cost optimization it one service i'm getting my customer is paying 100000 an year and i offer a service <clears throat> which consume do perform same job and perform uh, same job by 250000 a year it does not make any sense operational excellence performance efficiency reliability security i work with the government in saskatchewan and you know they need to have security on property so all that adhering to all that uh, thing which is part of azure advisor as well where we have cost security reliability operational excellence performance and that's what we did and we offer that solution so let me very quickly um, share that solution and uh, we will go from there at any point of time uh, feel free to look over um, well uh, raise uh, question whatever you have and i will happy to give the answer so this is data bricks uh, if someone who never work on data bricks these are the data bricks and in data bricks this is the notebook similarly the notebook we have also so right here as well into uh, sign ups as well so basically similar thing but that is on data bricks side this is on azure sign ups side uh, i use um, the python so basically you could use python or you could use um you know sql or any language or scala or what not so basically uh, i like python more so that's why i use python so what i did i gave the access key basically whatever the access key is um uh, container name and uh, i give the detail what file you need to ingest hey i said hey auto loader please ingest um please <clears throat> sorry it's asking me for cluster so let me give the cluster hey uh, auto loader i want to ingest csv file here you go and tomorrow if i see kashis is also here it's her project requirement is to ingest the json file you will say okay auto loader ingest the json file if it would be not the cloud if we have to change the ingestion mechanism or ingestion type or type casting or whatever word we will use it is so cumbersome but here we change it it make the that change create the data frame i did some transformation and save that data once i have that data save i have all the data available here and then again i select some data select like this syntax you could see percent sql like sql like syntax i deliberately used that so because i came from that background and i did the transformation and move from there so basically if we look over from perspective of uh data it is quite quite uh, i would say we have that agility to transform and move ahead so basically uh we <clears throat> by this solution we got a very good value out of this and i think that is something i want to share and uh which we could also leverage data governance data quality master data all those kind of different governance feature as well um here i think adhering to time i go the 30 minutes so i'm right on time 2 3 minutes before but um i can open the floor i could see couple of great minds nick uh is couple of time microsoft mvp based in toronto and um um i could i think unblock you nick and uh, i could also see rohit who is from germany as well my very good friend so basically um, doug uh if we can open and discuss over here is that okay or um uh, Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 so if I can if I can uh start things off with a question. Um 
so this this, uh, this is all really interesting to me and I, I thank you for um, bringing some stuff to my attention that I, I want to look into but I, I'm curious about where the friction is so um, you've talked today about the benefits of, um, of this architecture and the tooling and I'm curious is there anything that you wish was different or anything that you would like to change or, or see uh, iterated in a future version that would make life better that's a that's a good question so one of the biggest challenge which we face and uh, uh, let me explain from example the dependency dependency is okay if i use one feature i have to use similar feature in this are uh, loosely couple i'm talking about 17 years before what we you know learn a uh, loosely couple for example this feature all the data is available in the bronze table so basically, bronze table is kind of my archival storage, which sits on ADLS Gen 2, which is cheapest. And then uh, we have silver and gold, and here we have Power BI. But in, instead of Power BI in future, if we want to use Tableau, what is stopping me? I have my endpoints exposed, and my Tableau um, will you know, consume it, or SSRS old story, you know, old reporting system or what, what not. Like I have some customer, they are very comfortable into Excel as well. So basically they could ingest that data into the Excel and do all that transformation. Answer to your question is, okay, these are very good thing. What we can change uh, from my real time experience, I help one customer that is gaming customer well, well known in uh, uh, you know Australia and US, uh, well based, very good headcount. They come with the problem statement: our ex our Azure expenses are too much. Like they are shooting eight times more than what we are getting, eight hundred percent. And then I use Azure Well Architect framework and look over from cost optimization perspective. I figure out oh, okay, all the services are in premium uh, tier. Then I said, okay, do you guys really need developer development, uh, you know, jobs as well in premium tier? I don't think so. Secondly, I look their Azure signups running 24 by seven. The beauty of the cloud is you don't need to run your services 24 by seven. You could pause them as soon as you don't need them. They are automatically scaled. Their storage is different. Their compute is different. So if you don't need, for example, a school division, I work over there. If students' attendance is not required over weekend or summer vacation, I'm not burning my compute power over there, right? If there is no job. So all those things I look for, another find, I, me and Nick work on that project together as well. So we find the utilization of resources were 2%. And I said, seriously, if we are a, spinning up the premium resource and utilization is only 2%. We have to think very logically what we are spinning up, what is our, what heavy lifting we have to done and realistically we have to look. So answer to your question, Doug, there are so many gray areas where person like you and Rohit and Kasis and Nick, those are required who put their brain, I, I know computer, or these services can provide us so many things, but it can be blessing in disgrace as well. Great, thank you. Um, so I, I see we've got some other folks on the call. Um, if anyone wants to contribute to the conversation or chime in, now would be the time. Oh, I see Nick's unmuted. Yeah, um, I think uh, it's not really related to your question, but you said, what would you look differently Client's knowledge. I wish that was different. <laughs> if it's because this is a different mentality, uh, basically understanding big data. I, I try to explain and spe specifically, you know, things like Delta Lake or Synapse. Uh, what I try to tell them is on prem, you had one hard disk, one CPU, and one RAM, and you created a table in, let's say, three, four hours. Now, a good table, if you want to design it, will take you three days. And that is 
Now you got 60 nodes, 60 hard disks, 60 CP. So you have to think differently. So it's uh, sometimes it's not about the tool. So if I had a wish list, I wish the client understood this type of technology in details because it helped. And of course, real big data. We're not talking about 20 gig or even four terabyte. It's four terabyte. It's, it's a peanut. It's nothing. So I wish these two were always um, listed or provided for us before we start the project. But I don't know. That's my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. And that's a really interesting perspective. I think um, <clears throat> just thinking about my experience, you know, typically clients, um, they think their data is the most important data in the universe and that um, nobody else could possibly be operating on the scale that they're operating on. Um, and I, I, you know, I play in a little bit of a, um, a smaller space, I think, you know, most of my clients have very small, like sort of total envelopes of data uh, and, you know, less than a terabyte for sure. Um, and, and, but there's, you know, there's a lot of hype and excitement about big data and there is an expectation that you're going to deploy um, all this fancy tooling when most people don't really need it. So it's interesting that you say that because, and I, I think for, so if I'm guessing you're dealing with mostly with the enterprise and you feel that there's, there's a, like an education piece that's lacking. Yeah, I'm working with a uh, scene credit card, Rogers credit card, uh, Scotiabank. I finished Scotiabank. So these are the right things that are lacking. And I tell the clients if, if I want to define a successful project just with like half 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 a sentence is get your data ready first mm -hmm. get your data ready first before you sign a contract or everything so mm. um less than one percent of them they do that mm. and they understand it you know directors are backing me up but maybe 95 percent of them they have their data on the last day and it doesn't fit the model it doesn't fit anything and then you know we're talking about distribution like again it's the the subject is delta like i'm not trying to change subject or anything yep they don't understand the distribution uh and as usual usual they hear fancy words like synapse analytics and i'm like that's brilliant how much data do you have they say 20 million i'm like okay you can do it with an excel file you don't need you know right. an orchestra uh, <laughs> a, a army of uh you know uh, as your specialist, put it in an Excel file, get, get, finish it yourself. But, uh, you know, it, it's okay. We understand that. But um, there are extra management decisions that are being made that you have to respect. But uh, the thing I always say, I wish these two were in the list, you know, the knowledge and the data in on day one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Indeed, Nick. And I know your experience where you are dealing with terabyte of data. So terabyte is even peanut for you. And when you are working with, you know, bank and those where human goes or amount of data, I think. So that's so great. Thank you. To be honest, even the banks, they don't have data. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> banks, they have nothing compared to, let's say, Companies who deal with video or, or sound, they have, oh, unbelievable petabyte. But banks, because they have structured data, they don't even have four terabyte of data. You may not believe it. Not even close. Holy moly. So yeah. we are getting some insight because as per my understanding, no data is deleted in bank. So yeah, there, Exactly. There is, no such, there is no such a thing as deletion. You're not allowed, but like not only by design, security will check and you're not allowed to delete anything. Else. For example, credit card information. Credit card information is you swipe your credit card and that's it. So um, even US, even in Canada, you pick any bank, the amount of data you, they have is nothing. It, it's, it's, a, it's a joke <laughs> compared to, let's say, companies that are dealing with videos and sound. And, you know, one video is, I don't know, uh, yeah minimum one gigabyte and yep. a daily transaction credit card of of let's say a bank rbc rogers it's not even 17 million record a day it's not even yeah i've got some financial institution clients and and i agree like there's 
you know, it's there just isn't the volume of transactions that you're going to see in other applications and one other app because because at least some of us are in Windsor um, I've got to mention manufacturing and and uh, all of the lovely data that that um, is generated by the um, devices that are taking telemetry from the equipment in the, on the manufacturing floor that uh, can be a significant volume of data over time, much more than like a financial institution, as you say. Yeah, agreed, agreed. We did a nice project with Deepak on IoT with, uh, um, what was it? Um, you cannot share the client name, but that is the yeah, uh, energy it's... client from Prairies. And uh, we went over there and their problem statement, we gave the solution on IoT and um, uh, mitigating SCADA system and one of the guy he's about to retire on SCADA system and he opposes the maximum <laughs> like oh well SCADA system how you guys do and uh, yeah we went over there uh it is fun yeah, yeah. thank you for bringing we did one on we did one on uh, pharmaceutical machinery oh, yeah, that was the same amazing. company uh they were on nuclear as well but we we never saw anything. We just gave them the code. This is how you install. This is how you set it up, and they were very happy with it. How did they use it? We have no idea. It was I don't know. We were not allowed to know anything. That's that's all I can say. <laughs> but yeah, those are real data, the telemetry data, and uh, we worked on that a lot. Compared, we should come up with a a DPAC, something like streaming to Delta Lake with it. Maybe we should sure. create a presentation on that as well. Yeah, that is a good idea. That will be like, if we bring that gravity into the subject, that will definitely help a lot. I I want, you know, so many folks when it's we spread the word and bring the quality that will help. So Rohit, out of curiosity, how the things going in Europe or Germany specifically? You want to chime in? Uh, yeah. Hi, uh, this is Rohit. Um... I'm based in Germany, uh, working for an IT firm, uh, basically product based. So I'm not a um, cloud based guy. So um, it was very insightful for sure for me uh, since I'm started to learn this cloud based computing um, due to my future projects. So looking forward to more sessions like this. So so that I can explore more and see what is fitting to my needs here. Sound good, Rohit. And uh, yeah, Nick has very interesting stuff as well. I think uh, uh, next time or uh, we will plan and uh, we will start our cloud journey as well. Kashis, you want to share anything? Uh, your feedback, comment, compliments, complaints, feel free. Yeah, hi, hi, Deepak. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is all very interesting. Uh, I haven't worked with Azure. I have worked with AWS, like okay. um, their S3 and Glue uh, tools for like ETL. Uh, so, yeah, this is interesting. This is new. Like I've, I've heard about Delta Lake for Delta Lake uh, integration in Azure before. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's very interesting. It's definitely something to explore. Uh, and learn so yeah good stuff I like it thank you so much Kashish and uh, uh, there are uh, so much articles um, uh, like my articles have more than 1.5 million views so basically um, feel free to connect at LinkedIn uh, and have any questions uh, happy to assist with if you are planning to start your cloud journey or what to do and where to do and all that stuff so yeah thank you so much folks it's quite interesting and doug over to you okay thanks um yeah fantastic talk uh